Hi, this is Steve here in my workshop in Bellevue. Well, congratulations are in order. If you're here at this particular lesson assignment, that means that you've completed all nine of the first lessons in the Chopsmith Mark 4 7 520 self study course. And that means you've developed the skills or you've learned the skills for all of the operations on your Mark 7 or 4 or 520. And so in this lesson, 10, you get to put use all of the skills that you've learned up to this point in seven different assignments. And they're all going to be jigs and fixtures that you're going to use on a regular basis when you do your woodworking operations from now on. And the first two we're going to talk about today are the first two assignments. And the first one is going to be a drill press support jig. And that's this right here. And that's so that when you want to do drill press operations, you'll put that here and you'll have support. You'll have support for that table. We will put the table up against it so we're in vertical drill press so that the table can't slip down. The second one is going to be the reversible miter gauge extension. And that's what you see right here. But you'll use this quite, quite often. You'll use this just for doing some simple cross cutting, uh, not to specific length, but to, to rough length for long stock. And this is reversible. You can use it on this side or you can flip it over and use it on the other side. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to show you those today. So we're going to start out with the drill press support jig. And I've already, if, uh, I'm going to look up here on the board here now. Uh, probably better for the camera to be back over there. So that you can see, focus here up on the drill press support jig now. And if you need to close up, you can do that. But uh, of course, you know from the written uh, assignment, we've got the plans in there. And of course, for the, uh, this is just two by stock that we have here. And this is the, uh, cr the, uh, Length of it, remember we calculate it by your height. You take your height, subtract 53 inches, that'll get you your, your length. And so for me, that happens to be 70 inches. So that would be 70 minus 53 would give me 17 inches. So that's how long that I made mine. And you would be different for whatever your height is. Now, you can't do this any shorter than this being 4 inches, which would be... 57 inches minus 53. So if you're any shorter than that, you just won't use this jig at all. Also, if you're any taller than me, if you're any taller than 70 inches, you'll just leave it at 17. You won't make it any larger than that. Okay. And of course, you see we have a dado here on this end, 5, uh, five eighths inch deep, an inch wide. We have a dado on this end. Uh, uh, Actually, this is an end rabbit is what it is. Uh, this is actually a dado here. Uh, but it's so close to the end, you could call it an end rabbit if you want to. It's two inches wide and five thirty seconds inch deep. And I remember, you tilted your table down one and a half degrees to account for this angle on your carriage. That carriage does not go straight down. It actually goes down at an angle. And so that's to account for that. All right, so that's on the drill press support jig. I've already done all of the operations on this except for this very last dado. And that's what you're going to watch me do right now is this very last, actually I call it a dado because I'm using a dado set to cut this one. In your lessons, in your assignments, we just had to use the, this 10 inch blade that comes with your machine because most of you don't have the dado set. But if you have a dado set, you're welcome to use it, uh, but it'll work just as well with the table saw. You just have to do more cross have to do more cuts in order to get the, the full width. Uh, but I happen to have the dado head in my machine here, which you can see. I have mine set at three quarter inch width, uh, and uh, I've got my stock already marked. Let's take this off of here. So, this is the piece that I'm going to cut. This is my 5 seconds inch deep one that I did two inches long. And now this is the one I'm going to do on the other end. And I've already got it set up here. I've got a sacrificial fence here. This is a support on the backside so that I don't get any uh, blowout 
or uh, for my stock. So I'll get a clean cut on the reverse on the back side of my stock when I cut that through. And we're, we're going to cut that now. Of course, I can use my fence here because I'm not doing a through cut. I'm doing a, just a partial cut. So as long as you're not cutting all the way through your stock, it's safe to put your fence here and have it butt it all the way up against it. If we were doing a through cut, we couldn't do that. All right, I'm going to get on my hearing protection, my eye protection here. And Dottie's going to focus the camera on the front of the machine there so you can watch me cut this. From this side or do you want to... You're right, you're fine right there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do my seven step safety check. I've got my motor lock, my quill lock, trunnion lock, my carriage lock, and my table height lock. There's nothing on the auxiliary spindles and the machine is firmly on the ground. Everything is tight. Okay, so I'm going to set this, turn this on for I'll just tell you what I'm going through on this. I do a, a table saw for, for a six inch dado blade in softwood, general sawing, and that will give me 4,100 RPM. And I've got this set here. Uh, I know the plans say five eighths. That's so that to make sure that it'll work on your machine if you have the lift assist. If you don't have the lift assist, you can make it three quarters. And that's just fine. That's, that's what I have my set as three quarters because I don't have the lift assist. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the dust collection and we'll cut this. to do on this is to tack on our piece of plywood or MDF on here and uh, watch me over here at the table do that. I'm just going to glue it and nail it. Now the reason I put this end rabbit here is so that this would have something to butt up against. It's not going to move around when I glue it. So I'll go ahead and put my glue on here. Just some kind of glue. And they have they know what glue to use. They've got that in their plans. Okay. okay. And then we just put this right on here. And I've got three number three nails here. I'm just going to damp clear 
that cloth right off my excess glue. Take this scooter over here and see if I can pull that up. So this is the drill press support chip. So that one's done. So now I want to show you the reversible miter gauge extension. Of course, you've got the written plans in uh, your lesson also. If you recall, it's uh, 15 inches long, 3 and a quarter inches wide. You want this to be exactly three and a quarter inches wide. The 15, that's not a big deal, but that needs to be exactly three and a quarter wide. And I'll show you here why in a minute. The spacing between these two holes has to be exactly three and five eighths. If you're even off a sixteenth of an inch, it's not going to fit. It's got to be exactly three and five eighths between the centers. Uh, I said inches and plans, that's not critical either, but that, the spacing there, that is the critical item on these. And so, I'm going to show you now on, this is a completed one. I'll put it on the table, show you. And I'm going to take that uh, fence off. No, the fence on there now to show you this. So this one you see uh, that uh, it's got the carriage bolts and then the knurled nuts on the back side. We <laughs> Excuse me, I'm recovering from a hold that I've had for the last two weeks. This particular carriage bolt's not down far enough, I can see. Let me come over here and take care of that right now. So this is designed so that when you put it on here, you'll notice here, which I want you to notice is, I'll just turn this around so you don't have to change the camera, is this sits exactly right on the table. It touches the table. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's because we've got a chamfered edge. That chamfer is there. So the sawdust, uh, if you have sawdust on your table, it's not going to interfere with your cut. That's what this chamfer is for. And we had to cut that with a hand plane. Or if you didn't have a hand plane, you could do it on the table at 45. And then, remember, this is reversible. Meaning that, that's what that three and a quarter inch. And these, that was the other critical thing is, this spacing from, from, from edge to edge has to be exactly in the center. Okay, not off any, exactly in the center, because that makes it so it's reversible, so that we can flip it over and use it in this direction, and it will also still be touching the table. We want to touch the table, because if you're using extension tables, we want to be able to have those out there for support if you need them. All right, so that's the first two assignments for Lesson 10. And... I think uh, we're just going to wrap it up here. And, uh, of course, the next one after this is going to be the going to be the table insert. And then after the table insert, of course, we're going to be doing the L-fence. That's going to be the fourth one, is the L-fence. And this one, 
I believe it's going to be another version of this, but with uh, with a stop block on it, so you can actually do exactly to length. Uh, that's what the fifth one is. I know that the sixth one is the adjustable support stands, and I can't remember what number six is, but it's in your lesson plan. So, anyway, so good luck. We'll see you on the next one.